Hello everyone, welcome to the channel TopGate. In this video, I will discuss one more algorithm of the CPU scheduling that is called as the round robin scheduling algorithm. Okay, so we have till now seen what is FCFS scheduling, what we have seen the SJF and the SRTF algorithm, we have seen the preemptive and the non preemptive version of the priority scheduling algorithm. And if you go back to the previous lecture where I discussed about the FCFS scheduling, I told you that FCFS scheduling suffers from a problem a disadvantage called as the convoy effect in which the process having the shorter burst time wait for the process having the longer burst time okay so if we try to analyze that problem uh, then in that one if we uh, just change it a little bit we'll follow the same approach here that is uh, the process will be scheduled on the basis of the arrival time but with every process i will associate a time quantum and I impose a limitation on every process and I say that a process cannot execute for more than a time quantum. That is, if a, suppose a process comes and it is having a very high burst time, but the time quantum says the process cannot execute for more than two time units. So this process has to leave the CPU after executing two time units. Okay. So we can say that if we add preemption to FCFS, so FCFS was a non-preemptive algorithm. So if we add preemption to FCFS algorithm, we can uh, come up with the round robin scheduling algorithm. So let's discuss this round robin with the help of these few points. And then with the help of an example, I'll try to explain to you how this algorithm actually works. Okay. So the first point says that it is a kind of FCFS algorithm with preemption. That is, if we add preemption to FCFS algorithm, we will come up with a round robin scheduling algorithm. Clear? Okay. That is, in this one, we'll follow the same approach as we followed in FCFS. That is, we'll be uh, scheduling the processes on the basis of their arrival times. We'll not uh, schedule on the basis of the burst time or the priority. We'll only schedule the process on the basis of the arrival times. Clear. Second point says the main objective is to share the CPU between processes. Now in the FCFS algorithm, the main problem was if suppose a process comes and that process is having a very high burst time. So that process will not leave the CPU unless and until its work is completed. So the time for which this process is executing, every other process has to wait. That is all the applications, they cannot run unless and until this particular application is going on. So if we want to make our systems as a time sharing system, then we can use the round robin scheduling algorithm. In this one, uh, it is designed for time sharing systems. If many applications has to be executed simultaneously, then we can use a round robin scheduling algorithm. In that one, we can execute one process for some time for the uh, time quantum value. And then we have to switch it. We have to move on to the new process that will again execute for, for some time being. And then again, that will be shifted to the waiting state. And then again, a new process will be taken from the uh, ready queue and sent to the CPU for execution and so on. So this will uh, actually work in a cycle. So every process will execute for a limited duration of time it will uh, I mean it is not necessary that a process if it comes it has to complete it has to only execute for a uh, time value which we will give here okay and that time value is called as a time quantum so third point says there is a time quantum more than which a process cannot execute in a single iteration that is in this uh, in these questions will give you one more thing and that is called as a time quantum that is more than a time quantum a process cannot execute suppose a, a process has a burst time of 50 time units and the time quantum is only two units so uh, Unlike FCFS, where uh, if the burst time is 50, it has to execute 50 in this one, it will execute for only a time quantum value. So if a time quantum value is 2, this process has to execute for only 2 time units in a single iteration. Fine. So after completing its work in uh, 2 time units, it will again go to the block state. Then again it will come, then again it will go to the block state. And finally, it has to complete its work in 25 iterations. Clear? Fourth point says ready queue will be treated as a circular queue. That is every time we'll be taking one process from the head of the queue and after it's completed its work for a time quantum, it will be sent to the uh, tail of the ready queue. 
clear so this is the basic idea of the round robin scheduling algorithm so now let's discuss this with the help of an example so this is the example we have uh, four process in this one p1 to p4 and for those process we have been given the arrival times and the burst times and one more thing is given we have been given the time quantum is equal to 2 that is uh, any process cannot execute for more than two time units in a single iteration fine so if you talk about process p1 p1 is having five time units as the burst time but in a single stretch it will not be able to execute full five units it will only be able to execute two time units in a single iteration in this one uh, unlike other algorithms we will make the ready queue also and then with the help of the ready queue we will make the gain chart if you don't make the ready queue then there are very high chances that you may make some mistakes in this one but if you make the ready queue then i am 100 percent sure that uh, the chances of the mistake are negligible clear so in this one i will make the ready queue first okay so this is a ready queue and then here i'll make a gan chart okay so currently we are at time zero okay so at time zero i can see that there is only one process in the ram that is p1 so uh, in the ready queue only p1 is there currently okay so only p1 is there now what i told you that we have to take the process from the head of the ready queue and schedule it on the cpu so p1 is there on the head of the ready queue right now it is the only process so it is the head also it is the tail also so i'll take this process from the head of the ready queue and schedule it so it will start at zero and its requirement is five but the time quantum is two so therefore it will only execute for two time units so out of five we have executed two units so how many left three are still left so i'm writing three here okay so now uh, we are at time two right now now at this point we have to do two things we have to do, uh, follow two steps the first step is first of all i'll see at with uh, at time two what are the processes which are coming in the ram so i can see that at time two there is only one process that is p2 which is, which is coming in the ram so in the first step i will write p2 here that is the first step and now the second step is i'll see whether p1 has completed its work or not if p1 has completed no issues if p1 has not completed we'll do something so first of all check it whether p1 has completed its work or not so p1 has completed only two units and still it has left with three time units so therefore i will cut this p1 and i will send it to the tail of the ready queue fine so now the on the head of the ready queue we have p2 and on the tail of the ready queue we have a p1 clear so currently uh, on the head of the ready queue we have p2 so at this point p2 will start and i can see that p2's requirement is 3 but the time quantum is 2 so it will start at 2 and it will stop at 4 so out of 3 it has completed 2 units and 1 is still left so i'm writing 1 here okay so uh, this p2 has completed so now we are at time 4 so i'll see at time 4 is there any process which is arriving in the ram that is the first step so i'll see that yes p3 is there which is arriving uh, till time 4 so first step is i will write p3 here and then i'll check second step whether p2 has completed its work or not so if p2 has not completed i will cut it since p2 has still left with one unit i will write it here okay so now on the head of the ready queue we have p1 again so now i'll start with p1 and p1 is left with three time units so, but the time quantum is two only so it will start at four and it will stop at six so now still it's left with one unit so i'm writing one here okay so uh, we are at time six right now at time six i'll see is there any process which is arriving in the ram yes p4 is there so the first step is i will write p4 here second step is whether p1 has completed or not so p1 cut it p1 has left again with one unit so write p1 here clear so now on the head of the ready queue we have p3 so p3's time requirement is only two time units so p3 i'll start it here and it will complete its work at eight and complete terminate and goes out of the system clear so now we are at time eight i'll see is there any process which is arriving in the ramp 
no there is no process so therefore i will not write anything and now i'll check whether p3 has completed or not yes p3 has completed so therefore you cut it and don't write it here why because it has already completed clear so now the next process is p2 p2 is left with one unit so i will write p2 here it will start at 8 complete its work at 9 and terminate and goes out of the system now i'll again follow the two steps first step is we are at 9 and at 9 is there any process arriving in the system no there is no process so i'll not write anything now for p2 whether p2 has completed or not yes p2 has completed so therefore cut it and don't write it here clear so now on the head of the IDQ we have p4 and p4 is left with how many units six units so i will write p4 here so it will start at 9 and stop at 11 so now there is no process so first step i'll skip in this case because every process has already arrived so it will complete uh, at 11 that is it is still left with four time units and now we'll see whether p4 has completed or not so yes p4 is still left with four units so i will cut it and i will write p4 here clear so the next head of the ready queue is p1 so p1 is still left with one unit so it will start at 11 and it will complete its work at 12 so this is again completed goes out of the system and terminated clear so i will cut this p1 and i will not write it here why because p1 has already completed its work so now again uh, on the head of the ready queue we have p4 so i will start with p4 it will start at 12 and stop at 14 clear so now p4 has completed yes it is still left with two time units so i will cut it and write p4 here again clear so the next last iteration that is we have p4 on the head of the ready queue so i will start p4 again and complete it at 16 and this will again complete it and terminate and goes out of the system so this is the gan chart for the round robin scheduling algorithm now the tricky part is we have to find out the turnaround time and the wait time clear so i mean uh, it's a very simple thing just uh, we have to follow the old approach that we followed in other algorithms so let's quickly find out the completion time first so the completion time for process p1 p1 is finally completing at 12 so i will write 12 here so p2 p2 is finally completing at 9 so i will write 9 here p3 is completing at 8 so i will write 8 here p4 is completing at 16 so that is the completion time now the turnaround time turnaround time says we have to uh, subtract the arrival time from the completion time so the completion time that we have already found out that is 12 9 8 16 put the minus signs and the arrival times 0 2 3 5 so 0 2 3 5 so 12 minus 0 is 12 9 minus 2 is 7 8 minus 3 is 5 16 minus 5 is 11 now the wait times wait times are first of all i'll write the turnaround time 12 7 5 11 and then the minus signs and the burst times burst times are 5 3 2 6 so 5 3 2 6 that will give you 7 that will give you 4 that will give you 3 that will give you 11 minus 6 is 5 now let's quickly calculate the average wait time and the average turnaround time so the average wait time is we have this uh, 7 4 3 5 so 7 plus 4 plus 3 plus 5 divided by we have 4 process so it will be 7 plus 4 is 11 11 plus 3 is 14 14 plus 5 is 19 divided by 4 that will give you 4 and then uh, 3 that is uh, 7 5 clear and the average turnaround time will be we have turnaround times as 12 plus 7 plus 5 plus 11 divided by 4 that will give you 12 plus 7 is 19 19 plus 5 is 24 24 plus 11 is 35 so 35 divided by 4 it will be 8 point three 
सॉरी एट पॉइंट सेवन फाइव so 8.75 is the average turnaround time and 4.75 is the average waiting time clear so uh, i hope this uh, concept is clear to you so the only thing in this one that you need to remember is every time you have to make the ready queue if you are not making the ready queue there are high chances that you may make a mistake fine But, so uh, like in this one many people do this like uh, they start uh, with p1 since it is coming at zero so if they start with p1 and then they execute p1 for two time units again go to p2 again go to p3 then p5 so in this one uh, they start with Z, uh, p1 then go to p2 then go to p3 then go to p4 again go to p1 again go to p2 p3 p4 so this is an absolutely wrong approach we have to follow the ready queue clear so in this one you can see that we started with p1 then we went to p2 then again we started p1 then we got p3 again we got p2 then we got p4 again we got p1 clear so the um, this ready queue has to be made mandatorily if you are not making the ready queue high chances that you may make a mistake clear thank you so much